Hey y'all, my name is Yvette and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing the We Set the Dark on Fire book tag. This tag was created by Gande who has a book blog called The Teenex Magic and I was tagged by Jocelyn over at Yogi with the book. This tag is based off of this book, We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor Kim Mejia and this is queer latinx ya dystopia and i love it so much this is the first book in a duology and the second one actually came out this year i recently read it and i really really enjoyed it so if you're looking for something queer or something latinx i would highly recommend this duology the first question of this tag is danny a book you would sacrifice everything for and i am going with that could be enough by Alyssa cole this is a historical ff romance about a woman named mercy she is the maid to elizabeth hamilton and she has completely shut herself off from the possibility of love which is of course when she meets someone. She ends up crossing paths with a dressmaker who knows exactly what she wants out of life and at the moment what she wants is mercy and mercy is overwhelmed. I have so much love for this book. I rated it five stars but the reason why I would sacrifice everything for it is because something I read in the author's note. This was the first book that Alyssa Cole wrote after the 2016 election and her two previous books were also historical romances that were about people who who love their country despite its faults but after the election she couldn't write another book like that so instead she wrote this a book about regular people in a country that is still finding its way. In her author's note she talks about how there have always been marginalized folks and how they have always lived and loved and thrived and found their communities overcoming obstacles while holding on to that hope that America will become a place that is worthy of their hope and I love that idea so much. The second prompt for this tag is Carmen which is a book that you didn't see coming and hit you hard. It can be a plot twist you didn't see coming, a book that you had low expectations for but pleasantly surprised you and I am going with I Am Afraid of Men by Varik Shreya. This is a nonfiction book about a trans Canadian Indian artist and it was an easy five stars. It's about gender and gender expression and toxic masculinity and the author's experiences. I heard about this book from my sister Priscilla over at Bookie Charm. She really loved it and rated it five stars which she doesn't do very often so I was interested. At the time I was coming off of a string of okayish queer memoirs and I I was kind of feeling burnt out on those type of books so I was going into this with very low expectations. Reading this was a punch to the face. The author poses a lot of questions about how we think about gender within the queer community and it's simply but powerfully written and I highly highly recommend it. The third prompt is Mateo, a book or character you want to throw in the trash and I'm going with a book that I actually threw in the trash and that is Candy Color Paradox by Usaku Natsumi. This is a queer manga that I picked up on Impulse at Barnes & Noble when I was picking up a copy of Bloom Into You which is an FF romance that I actually really like but this one was right next to that and it looked queer too so I was like Sure, why not? I'll go ahead and get that too. This is a hate to love romance between a journalist and a photographer and I don't quite remember all the details because I didn't want to remember them and it was quite a while ago that I read this but I do remember thinking that this book fetishized male-male relationships. At some point attempted rape is used as a plot device to get the characters together and then after they have sex one of the characters asks the other one if he liked it and he's like no I didn't but I'll keep doing it because you like it and like to each his own but the way it was written was very like cringy and very what the fuck. And I'm a bit confused because this book has a pretty high rating on Goodreads and I don't know if I am missing something or if I'm reading too much into something or if I read the wrong book but the general consensus is that this book is pretty good and my opinion of it is that it's pretty pretty bad. The fourth prompt is Sota, a book that you wish you knew all the secrets of and I'm going with the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This is an adult fantasy in a series where the earth goes through the cycles of environmental collapse called seasons and there are people who have these sort of earth bending like powers but it's more complicated than that. I want to know the secrets of a series where each book in the series won a Hugo Award. The characters, the story, the magic system, the world building, everything was so complex and innovative. There are plenty of secrets in this series, I know it. When I was reading it, I was sure that some things were going over my head and I have no doubt that if I were to reread this series, I would get so much more out of it the second time around. The next prompt is La Vos, a book about finding your voice slash fighting the system slash burning everything to the ground and I'm going with Strange Birds, A Guide to Ruffling Feathers by Celia C. 
Perez. This is a middle grade summer contemporary about a group of girls who kind of stumble into being activists. None of the girls know each other before this summer. They come together because one of the girls is really lonely and she puts out an invitation for kids to join her secret club and once she has a group of girls assembled they have to figure out what this club actually does. They find things that they are passionate about and fight for them and basically what started off as a search for a few friends ends in a string of protests. They learn about activism and become really good friends along the way and it's just so good. It's something I would definitely recommend to younger readers and something that I wish I had when I was younger. The next prompt is Medio, a fictional school that you would like to attend. And I spent a good chunk of time trying to think of a school that I would like to go to and that I also probably wouldn't die at and I couldn't think of anything good besides Hogwarts so I ended up going with Jean Grey's School for Higher Learning. This is a school in the X-Men comics and specifically it's one that started by Wolverine in the 2011 run of Wolverine and the X-Men. Historically mutant kids and mutants in general do not have a very high survival rate. Like something they say to you when you go to this school is I hope you survive the experience. But also it would be pretty cool to have powers and pretty cool to have a class on how to fly a jetpack which is canonically a thing in this school so it evens out. The next prompt is Primera, a character that would be an amazing Primera and a Primera is her husband's partner. She will help him with his work, she has to be smart, confident, but she is not allowed to be sentimental or vulnerable. When I saw this question I immediately thought of Tatsumi from Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. Tatsumi is a samurai who wields a sword with a demon trapped inside of it. He can use this demon's strength to an extent but the trade-off is that he cannot allow himself to feel any emotion because if he does the demon can use that as an opening to possess him and take him over and walk the earth again to wreak havoc. Even one moment of vulnerability can spell disaster not only for himself but the world. So while he is this super competent demon killing machine he can't allow himself to feel anything. The next prompt is Segunda, a character that would make an amazing Segunda and a Segunda is her husband's lover. She will be the mother of the family. She's supposed to be kind, romantic, caring, and effortlessly beautiful. For this one I'm going with Audrey from The Stars and Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. Audrey is a 16 year old Trinidadian girl who is sent to live in America with her father after she's caught kissing a girl. She ends up making a friend in America that she quickly grows close to and that friend ends up getting sick and Audrey is there caring for her every step of the way in her illness. All those things that were listed that a Segunda is supposed to feel Audrey embodies them all but I think one of the most important things about a Segunda is that she feels and Audrey feels a whole heck of a lot. Throughout this book she feels so many emotions. She's happy, she's heartbroken, she's desperate and I really felt it when I was reading this. And finally the last prompt of this tag is Set on Fire, a book that gives you hope. And I'm going with Parkland, A Birth of a Movement by David Cullen. This is a nonfiction book about the March for Your Life movement following the Parkland shooting. And rather than focusing on the shooter and the actual shooting, this book focuses on the kids that started this movement. And these are really some extraordinary kids. The author of this book is kind of the expert on school shootings. He wrote a similar book for Columbine and he was actually on the ground in Parkland with these kids as they were organizing and doing all this stuff for March for Your Lives. He saw the kids put together this movement and this massive event all on their own. He saw them learn and listen and create a network of activists across the country. All the while they were dealing with the emotional fallout from this really traumatic thing that happened and while doing teenager things like going to prom and participating in school plays. These kids really did something amazing and something you wouldn't think was possible especially from a group of teenagers with no prior experience in activism and it gave me hope reading about them seeing something that was wrong and feeling so passionate about changing it that they moved a country. And that is going to be it for the We Set the Dark on Fire book tag. I am not going to tag anyone in particular but if you've read this book and you've liked it I tag you. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.